that can. Most pleasant mother pheasant plucker to ever pluck a mother pheasant. Simon simply said that the Firebase database is schemaless. That's my tongue twister. Ask Firebase 009, take one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. And today is a super special episode because we have my coworker, my colleague, my friend, dare I say, my muse, Aww. Todd Kerpelman on the show. And Todd is a developer advocate here at Firebase with a specialty for iOS. Fun fact about Todd is, is that his favorite color is red. And the make of his first car is Nissan. And his favorite childhood friend is named Adam. His mother's maiden name is Davis. And the first four of his social security is 9142. Uh, D David, are, are you you stealing my identity? Well, apparently I already have. Oh. We have a great episode for you today. Todd is an amazing iOS developer, so we have lots of questions focused on iOS today. So how about we uh, get started? Sounds good. Question, Question time. time. You're much better gorilla than me. Wow. So this is from Beneath on Twitter who asks, hey, ask Firebase. Hashtag. Are there any videos coming up on crash reporting on iOS? And the answer is yes, eventually. I've got a few videos that I need to do on analytics first. We're gonna have a little series on that. And then maybe one or two on dynamic links that I'd like to address, some advanced topics there. But then yes, I do wanna at least cover the basics of screencasts on all the features that Firebase has to offer, one of those being crash reporting. It's generally easy to set up. Testing it is a little weird because you have to kind of make sure that Xcode doesn't sort of grab the crash before crash reporting does. I heard that you just published a video Video on Firebase storage in iOS. That might be true, but only subscribers would get to find out. So maybe you should subscribe somewhere down here. It's down. I bet you there's a button. Is so it down here? Right here. Look underneath here. There's probably a button. It's right. Oh, there it is. What's that out? What's that out on the horizon? It looks like another question. This one is also from Beneath on Twitter, who has a two-parter here. One, how can we send interactive push notifications to iOS devices? And two, how can we send push notifications to all devices from my terminal and Mac? What is an interactive push notification, Todd? Well, I don't quite know what he means, but my guess is it probably has to do with those categories that you get in notifications on iOS. So you can specify a category that any notification belongs to. You can then add actions to that category. And that gives you like those nice two or three buttons that get associated with a notification when you receive them on iOS. So the answer is that you can do that, but when you are sending this notification to um, the Firebase Cloud Messaging Service, you need to add the click action key instead of category. So if you were sending this to APNS, you would say category, my special category. Within Firebase Cloud Messaging, you need to say click underscore action and then add your category name. And that will make those notifications interactive on iOS. Unless, of course, he's talking about some of the extra special fancy stuff that Apple has added into notifications on iOS 10. For that, that requires a fairly new user notification framework. And that's something that we will be supporting soon, if not by the time this video is out. So keep a lookout for that. For the second part, how can we send notifications to all devices from my terminal in Mac? So Firebase Notifications has this really nice feature where you can say, hey, let's send this message to everybody who's using this app. You can't actually do that with a curl command or something like that from the terminal. What you can do as a workaround, and I think what a lot of developers do, is they simply have every instance of their client subscribe to like an all users topic within Firebase Cloud Messaging. And then you can send a notification to everybody within that topic from your desktop or you know from your server from a little curl call. And that's how you basically send these notifications to all of your clients. Thank you for that two-parter. Both very good questions. Let's see what else we got. Incoming question! Ah! This next question comes from Lucian on Twitter. And Lucian asks, I saw a code lab on how to build real-time chat for the web. Can we do the same for Android and iOS? And yes, Lucian, you can. If you go to the Code Labs website, there's actually two Code Labs, one for Firebase iOS Code Lab in Swift, and then another one for Firebase Android Code Lab that will get you up and running building your magical chat app in no time. So if you want to check that out, link is in the description. Great question, Lucian. We got a question coming in. <laughs> this is from David West who asks- Wait, wait, what? Oh, wow. He's really, really David West on Twitter. His name is actually David West. Wow, maybe he's your evil twin. Yeah. Wait, what if he's the nice one? Yeah, that would make you- What? So David asks, I love using Firebase on iOS. Oh, thank you. What is the best way to sync data to and from watchOS? 
Well, from what I understand is that watchOS doesn't support all of the libraries that you can get on your iPhone. And mainly for Firebase, the problem there is CF network. That's how we do the socket connection. So what do we do, Todd? So yeah, my understanding is you could not connect to Firebase directly from your watch. You would probably have to use your phone to communicate back and forth to Firebase and then communicate any relevant changes back up to the watch from there. And for that, I think you'd probably use your standard like watch connectivity library with the update application context call to do most of that. But I would like to add a caveat that I haven't actually made any watch OS application, so I may or may not know what I'm talking about because I don't have an Apple Watch. But if anyone out there would like to send me their Apple Watch, I... That was not an Apple Watch. But if you would like to send me an Apple Watch, I promise that I will wear it during my next episode. That is a great question, David West. And I'm watching you. Oh, what's, what's going on in there? Oh, I got another question. It's in 3D. <laughs> I've never actually geeked like this before. Okay, Todd, you, what you do to me, Todd? I do this. <laughs> it's good though. So this next question comes from Anton on YouTube. And Anton asks, can a dynamic link survive a sign up or login process? So Todd, what do those words actually mean? Ah, so the deal with Firebase dynamic links, what makes them so special is that they can survive the app installation process. Meaning that if a user clicks on a dynamic link, goes to install your app and then opens your app for the first time, that app can retrieve the original context of the deep link that the user clicked on to install your app in the first place. And then you can use that information to provide them with sort of a customized first time experience and so on. I believe what Anton is asking is, well, what if you need your user to like sign in first or go through some type of setup process? The answer is yes, uh, a dynamic link can survive that too, but it's up to you, the app developer, to actually remember that. So you will get a dynamic link context when the user first opens your app, but if you want your user to go through the whole process of signing in before they can use your app, you've got to remember that somewhere, you know, store it in like your user settings or something so you can grab it later. Later, then after your user is finished signing in, setting up an account, doing whatever it is you need them to do, then go ahead and grab that original link and then perform whatever first time experience you want to present to that user. Yep. All right, thank you very much, Anton. Great question. Thanks for clarifying. Oh, that's what I'm here for. So I was just telling you. Well, well, stop. Question time. This question comes from Nikin on YouTube who asks, how can I get real-time active users of my app through Firebase? Is it possible? Well, now, since this question was asked in response to our Firebase analytics video, I'm kind of assuming the question is, how can I do this through Firebase analytics? Can I open up my analytics page and see how many people are using my app right now? And the answer basically is no, you can't quite do this. Generally speaking, um, if you're looking at timing for Firebase analytics, your device will send down data from the device to Firebase analytics about once an hour or on iOS when your app goes into the background. Now, once Firebase Analytics receives that data, it can immediately export that data to BigQuery if you've linked up Firebase Analytics and BigQuery, and you can see your data in there nearly as soon as Firebase Analytics receives it. And then on the Firebase Analytics side, every couple hours, it will process the data that it has and munges it up and spits it out to you in sort of a nicely formatted way. But if you're actually looking to see how many people right now are using my app, you can't really do that through Firebase Analytics. So if only there were some other way well, thank you for right, asking time. the question. Yeah, uh, what? You can actually use the real-time database to see which users are active in your app. We have a real-time database? Yeah. That's sure. awesome. It's real-time and it's a database. Hmm. So if you use the real-time database, it has a present system. So the real-time database uses a socket connection. So that is a persistent connection from the device up to the real-time database. So when someone joins, it knows that. And when someone leaves, it knows that as well. So you can use the on disconnect methods to know when someone signs up, you just do your business. And then when they do on disconnect, you can just remove them from the queue. So have a list of active users. And when they leave, just pluck them right off. Hmm. Well, that works too, I guess. Yeah. All right. Firebase, well, it works. Firebase, yeah, it's cool. All right, well, thank you very much, Nikin, for your question. Good question. Excellent question, I would say. Was it a good question? I think it was a good question. It was a good question. Yeah. Thank you all so much for stopping by this show, and thank you, Todd, for stopping by as well. Oh, thanks for having me. This was fun. Oh, yeah. Always a pleasure, Tom. And if you want your question answered on next week's episode, make sure to send it on YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow, and like always, use the hashtag AskFirebase. And uh, that's all. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next time. All right. I got to go change all my passwords now. Oh, no. I already did that for you. Oh. All right. Wait, wait. Oh, that was terrible. There we go. Yeah. That's how we fight in Firebase that's how we land. Do it. Aggressive patty caking. Patty. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs>